Hello there, this is Gerald C717. Welcome to Kerbal Space Program. Let's go ahead and get started. Uh, we're still doing training. We're going to do this time uh, advanced construction. This tutorial presented by famous rocket scientist Werner von Kerman himself covers how to design a craft that can orbit Kerbin and return safely. <coughs> Welcome to the third and final tutorial about construction, the advanced construction tutorial. <coughs> I've had to delay some important work today to fit this in, so pay close attention as I show you how a real rocket scientist makes orbital craft. Go on, go inside the VAB. our last tutorial we built a vessel that could escape the atmosphere, but it didn't have enough oomph to escape for long. This time around we'll cover more advanced rocket design concepts like multiple stages and boosters, as well as the extra parts of as the extra parts like RCS and solar panels. You'll want these if you spend more than a few minutes in orbit. When you're done with when, you, when we're done, you'll have a craft capable of ascent to orbit, orbital operations, and a safe return to Corbin. Corbin. And you can test it out in the Go for Orbit tutorial, which will teach you how to make use of it all. Getting started. First, you'll, first no, <coughs> you'll notice that there are lots more parts available this time. That's because an orbit-capable craft is much more complex than that little puddle jumper one sh I sh wait, jumper I showed you how to make last time. However, the main pr principles are the same, so I hope you remember what I taught you. If you mess up and say, somehow manage to de delete your whole craft, you can hit the Control Z to undo your last change. Select the pod. Again, you only have one pod available, so go ahead and select it. If you select the wrong one, okay. <coughs> Just like last time, select the parachute and place it. Adjust perimeters. Again, the like last time, adjust the parachute perimeters by right-clicking on the part you wish to plate. When the sheet's been in pressure, so you're a satisfied. Click next. Okay. And pressure. Okay. <laughs> the upper stage. <coughs> We're now going to construct an upper stage. This upper stage will finish placing the pod in orbit and once there provide RCS steering thrusters and electricity for the pod. It will also provide all maneuvering capability in orbit including the re-entry burn. It's going to consist of a decoupler we don't want to carry at home, an RCS fuel tank and a liquid fuel tank. For our CS thrusters, four solar panels, four batteries, and an efficient upper stage engine. <coughs> and an upper stage engine. That's quite the shopping list, isn't it? So let me know when you're ready to proceed. <coughs> add mm -hmm. a stack coupler. Mm -hmm. Firstly, we will add a stack coupler below the pod to let us discard the parts we don't want to bring back with us. Grab a decoupler from the toolbox and attach it to the bottom of the pod. Paying close attention to that, the little red arrow, and okay, the arrows are pointing down, and okay, the couplers. It would have to be this one. Okay. <coughs> Add an RCS tank. Next we'll add an RCS tank, RCS stands for Reaction Control System, and this fuel will help us with fine maneuvers. Go to the tanks category and add the R fuel tank, go to the decoupler. <coughs> this 
میشه آره Tweak the RS loading. Your craft is not going to need all the mono propellant in the tank. So to save some weight, right-click it to get to the parts option and move the slider down to 96 units. Mono propellant is called that because while large rocket engines use two propellants, fuel and oxidizer, RS uses a single propellant. R RCS is generally less efficient, but is good for small velocity changes in any direction rather than just forwards like the main engines do, and can be used to rotate the craft as well as move it. Add propellant tanks. <coughs> we'll be adding multiple liquid fuel tanks in this stage to get the right amount for the upper stage engine, and we need an extra tank to offset the weight of the RCS. Add, so add a tiny rocket propellant tank. It's the one named FLT100 fuel tank. Okay. Then add a medium one. Then add a medium one or to 400. Okay. I don't know what 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 the point of that was. I know this is this top one maneuvers. This small maneuvers up in space. I think this here is. Go. <laughs> the miniature fuel tank made to be even more adorable than its bigger brother, <coughs> the T200. Handles in with care. The FL series has was has received. Uh, okay, next. Add a carrier engine. Lastly, for the main part of this upper stage, we'll add an engine. The carrier engine produces almost no thrust at sea level air pressure, but is highly efficient in space and above 20 kilometers where the atmosphere is thin enough to not interfere with the exhaust. This makes it a good choice for an upper stage since the engine will not be activated until the rocket has reached the conditions where the, this kind of engine works well. If you select the wrong engine, you can always throw it away and try it again. PA the LV909 carrier. center of mass. <coughs> Nicely done. That's a pretty well assembled upper stage. If I do say so myself. It'll get you to orbit if you put enough rocket under it. While we have this reasonably simple vessel here, let's explore one of the other useful tools we have available. To make sure that your ship flies controllably, some parts need to be placed carefully around a point inside the ship called the center of mass. This center of mass is a spot where the, the mass on one side is balanced by the mass on the other side. Thrust applied through this center of mass will cause the ship to move without unwanted rotation. While thrust properly applied around this center of mass will cause the ship to re rotate without moving. This makes the 
center of mass such a useful and important thing that we need added a tool so the assembly building can show it to you with a marker let's have a look at how that indicator works here click on the center of mass indicator toggle and we'll have a play here's a picture of it with the indicator highlighted let's be over here okay watch this center of mass okay let's adjust the fuel levels in some of the tanks to see how that affects the center of mass right click on each of the fuel tanks and drag the fuel and oxidizer propellant level down to zero don't touch the mono propellant levels as this as they won't be burnt by the terrier engine as you do as you're doing this you will see that this move during the flight the vessel will move in the same way as it burns its fuel and the tanks are empty okay uh, right click on the fuel tanks and drag the fuel don't touch them on a propellant level. Okay, this will be the one we want. This moves, this moves a little bit, doesn't move that much. I do them all. Okay, just move zero. Okay. Okay, now go ahead and refill the tanks, and we can proceed to add some of the accessories to our upper stage. They'll transform it from merely something that gets us into orbit into something that helps us once we're there. Okay. <clears throat> Where to place RCS thrusters. <clears throat> now that you know where the center of mass is when the stage is full and when it's empty, you have the information you need to place RCS thrusters. RCS thrusters are found in the command and control category. <coughs> Moving the spaceship without rotating it is called translation. This is a useful kind of maneuver for several reasons, including docking to other craft. In order for translation with RCS to avoid unwanted rotation, you need to balance the thrusters around the COM so the net sum of forces is balanced right on this natural pivot point. So two equal sets of thrusters, each set should be distant from the COW and for the second set what we're going what we're doing here they should be right around the COM itself what makes this complicated is that the COM changes during flight as you just saw so you need to place the thrusters at a compromise point between the wet COM and the dry COM note that in career mode games RCS thrusters don't become available until fairly late in the meantime, the reaction wheel cap cap capability built into your command pod will probably be enough for turning in space, though reaction wheels will not allow you to translate. <coughs> Placing the RCS, RCS thrusters. Now let's turn on angle snap to make the aligning the thruster parts easier do that by clicking on the toggle snap icon in the lower left of your okay. okay. 
sure we have the four times the metric turned on. Okay. And then place a set of RSV thruster blocks on your upper stage. The tiny rocket propellant tank is right about the right place to attach these. Just in case you need a hint. The tiny rocket propellant tank. get the placement quite right, you can also use the offset gi gizmo to fine tune their position. Make sure you turn angle snap off before using the offset. You will want fine adjustments for that and with snap turned on the adjustments are anything but fine. Click the offset mode icon in the upper left the offset mode icon in the upper left of the main editor window just to the right of the part list. Then click the RCS part. Drag one of the axis indicators to move it. If you want to reset this adjustment, hit space, then when done, go back to the place mode. You can use the off offset gizmo to fine tune their position. Make sure you turn angle snap off. Before using the offset. You will want to find you want to find it for that in the center sign. Click the offset mode icon in the upper left of the main editor window. Just to the right of the part list. The well, this is probably a year. And maybe not. Maybe this is it. Just right at the part list, this would be it. first. Okay. I don't think it's... I don't think that's right. placement quite right, you can also use the offset gizmo to fine tune their position. 
the offset gives what the frick is the offset shit? I don't see that. It says it's up in the upper left. Upper left of the main editor window. Just to the right of the parts list. It would have to be that one of these. Uh oh, will that be? To offset, okay. Click the RSA's part, drag one of the axis indicators to move it. I okay. to reset this adjustment hit space when dag and go back to place mode Okay, place mode. I want to go back to and it's still not letting me do anything. Turn off the um, let me turn that off, which is center mass. There we go. Okay, god. <sighs> Electric charge. Lots of things on a craft use craft use electric charge. That's what us cool scientists call rocket electricity. In order to keep your batteries topped up, you will need a way of generating power. Now, some engines generate electricity while they're running, but you don't want to keep your engine running in orbit. Your orbit would get all kinds of messed up, and you'll run out of propellant. Our command pod has some batteries built into it, but but to be safe you could add more batteries and you could add solar panels or other electricity generating items. We're going to do both. Adding batteries and solar panels. Switch to the electrical category now and ensure we have angle snap turned on and we are still at four times symmetry mode. Uh, electrical would be Probably this one. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Panels and battery pack. <coughs> we'll use our part rotation skills to adjust the the panels before placing them. That's the W and the keys we used earlier. Grab the OX stat. Okay. Hold it over the lower end of the fuel tanks. 
and press A to rotate at 90 degrees, then click in place to set them. Alright, then hold it over the lower end of the fuel tanks. This be down here, right? I'll go ahead and place a set of batteries between the solar panels. <coughs> upper stage complete. Excellent work. You built a nice starter upper stage which will do well for some orbital ex exploration. Now we need to work on getting it up to orbit, and for that we'll build up our lower stage. In comparison to the upper stage, it's quite simple. Just a couple of tanks and an engine. That won't be enough alone, however, so we'll add some boosters too. Stage decoupler. Add another D212 stack coupler on the bottom of the terrier. We'll need to during this. Okay, You'll, we'll need this during our ascent to discard the empty parts of the vessel below. Oh, and notice how when you add the decoupler, a fairing is placed around the engine. This will get jettisoned automatically when we stage the decoupler. Add mm -hmm. tanks. Mm -hmm. Now we need to add the fuel tanks for our lower stage. Add two of the medium rocket propellant tanks, a 400 fuel tank, to the bottom of the stack. Two of them. Okay. And add the two medium rubber on the stack, okay. Add a swivel engine. <coughs> For our lower stage we need an engine that is a sustainer. That's an engine that burns from lift off until well after the boosters separate. Let's get scientific scientific for a second. Rocket engine performance is measured by specific impulse or ISP and the ISP of an engine changes as the amount of atmospheric pressure around it changes. Just as the upper stage needed an engine that is good at the low air pressures of high altitudes, the lower stage will need boosters which are powerful at the higher air pressure of the low altitude of the launch pad and to help carry the rocket through the transition from launch to upper stage. It will need a sustainer engine which usually sits between boosters and upper stage engines from a performance perspective having a wide range of between the two. So add this big engine you see there the VT45 swivel to the bottom of the tanks. Tweak the swivel. At, at its default thrust level, the swivel is too powerful for the rocket we're creating, and for the ascent prof profile we're going to teach you in this Go for Orbit tutorial. Set pro, okay. So you'll need to lower its thrust level. This isn't as good a solution as picking a smaller, lighter engine with the thrust level we want, but well, there are always so many of options. Right click the swivel and lower its thrust limiter to 65. <clears throat> it will then only produce 65% of its fuel thrust, full thrust potential but it will also run longer because it's only burning 65% as much fuel. <laughs> Add radial decouplers. Nice. You now have the core of your rocket completed. But as I said before, we'll also be adding boosters to help the sustainer engine get the rocket up and running. We'll add two boosters, semester, semester, oh, whatever, 
so that we keep our craft balanced and to make sure we don't lug the useless dry mass of the boosters around after they burn out, we'll attach them using decouplers. This time, however, we'll use radial decouplers so the boosters can sit between can sit beside our lower stage core instead of under it. That way the sustainer and boosters can fire at the same time. Select the TT thirty eight K radial decoupler and add it to the add it in two times symmetry under the bottom of the lowest tank on the lower stage. bottom of the lowest tank on the lower stage. Well, that didn't go, did it? Okay. <coughs> Add SRBs. More boosters is something you often hear around the KSC, and now it's time to add some. Add a pair of T RT10 hammers SRBs to the cut decouplers, so we have what's it's an extra kick on or kick early on. I think they both have to be, all, everything has to be green. Um, I don't know, it's not right. Do we have angle snap on or off? That's not right. Doesn't look right. Well, apparently that's right. Tweak the RSV thrust. Unlike LF liquid fuel engines, where you can adjust the throttle to reflight, once you once you light an R, or an SRB, it burns at constant thrust until it's out of fuel. We can, however, use a throttle limiter as we did on the swivel to set the constant thrust before we roll out of the launch pad. <clears throat> Right-click on one of the RSVs and change its thrust limiter to 50. Do note that changing a tweakable valve value on one part that has been placed using symmetry will have the same change on the other part. Okay. Remember, to down to what, to 50? Remember when I said I'd teach you how to make that pod and thumper craft from construction basics of survivable? 
Well, this thrust adjusting is how that could be done. Although you'd have to put have put also have to put a decoupler on it. Okay. <clears throat> Add nose cones. Right now the RSVs have flat pancake toss, which is simply not a good look. Oh, and bad aerodynamic. Let's fix that by adding a pair of nose cones. Nose cones can be found in the aerodynamics category. Okay. Alright. <clears throat> Add fins. <coughs> While we're on that tab in the tool bulk, let's add some fins too. Fins come in various sizes and styles. And as we've learned earlier, we they'll help stabilize your craft. Since these fins are <coughs> control surfaces, <coughs> control, they also add some extra control authority when low in the atmosphere, where the air is thick enough for them to have a helpful effect. Add the AVR winglets in a four times lift. place about right there I believe yep <clears throat> near the bottom of the lowest fuel tank in the lower day and make sure they don't intersect the decouplers and everything they do if they do overlap those parts any flight will be interesting but ex exceptionally short <laughs> okay next <laughs> fix staging excellent we've got now got all the components on our basic orbital rocket but let's run through a few extra things before we call it a day firstly we should review the staging stack to check the order of actions and parts displayed there it's lucky i've highlighted this for you because the rs the, R, the srbs are set to fire before the sustainer and that just won't do you won't have enough thrust to get off the pod that way Move the swivel, sta swivel staging icon down to the same stage as the R SRBs. Create a staging sequence would work if you did not want the long burning sustainer to ignite at the same time as the high thrust booster. But since we do, we had to adjust it manually. Okay, couplers. <coughs> Line for launch. Finally, pick up the pod and rotate it 90 degrees around the vertical axis. This will rotate the ship not just the in the VAB, but also set its orientation when we go to the launch pad. So that our desired flight heading of East, Compass 90, will be a matter of steering it in a pitch and the down axis rather than yaw. By default, parts of the VAB are oriented so that they are lined north. So they rotate the ship, okay, first pick up the pod and rotate it 90 Pod. Pod, okay. And okay. rotate it 90 degrees around the vertical axis. Press Q and E. This will rotate the ship, not just in the VAB, but also it's at its orientation when we go to the air launch pad. Did I have that? I think it's like that. Oops. I hope that's right. Action groups. Okay. We always make every effort to ensure our brave crew survive and hopefully you will take the same stance in your space program. It doesn't always work out that way, of course, but it's the thought that counts, at least to those of us not in the rocket at the time. With that in mind, let's set up an abort action group for your craft. 
for use in case of emergency. Note that in career mode you'll have to upgrade the VAB and SPH in order to access action groups. Click on the turquoise action group button on the left of the toolbar. It's part of the cluster of three buttons. Action groups. Action groups let you assign the functions of one or more parts to a single specific key. There are some default action groups. Landing gear automatically go in the gear group. Brakes on wheels go in the brake group, etc. Some and some custom ones activated by the keyboard, not keypad. Numbers. Because of the order of these keys on standard boards, the action groups are numbered 1 through 9 and then 0. Okay. To set up an action group, click on the desired action key from the menu, then click on the part you want to activate. The actions are already assigned to the group number in the group action column and the actions can be assigned from the selected part appear in the selection column. To add and remove items, you simply click on them to move them left or right between columns. To clear an action group, reset and group. We're going to set up an abort action group. It's triggered by pressing backspace or by, by clicking the big red abort button in flight. It slides out from the left of the altitude panel at the bottom of the screen when you mouse over the area. First click on the abort button in the action group column. Abort, here we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great, mm -hmm. now click on the decoupler right below the pod and add its decouple action to the group. Then click on the liquid engine in turn and assign their shutdown functions to the group. The liquid engine. That would be. Well, which one? That would be the. Finally, click on one of the radio decouplers and assign decouple to the group. Since these were placed with symmetry, applying the action to one radio will apply the other one. <clears throat> when you now, when you trigger the abort button in flight, the engines will shut down or if they can't shut down, be decoupled. The capsule will separate from the rest of the ship and it should be safe to land by itself. Remember to deploy your parachute once it's safe, however. This may require staging a number of times since the stage counter won't advance by itself when the parts are coupled for the air stage. Quick shut down. Assigned a couple to the group since these were. Now that now when you trigger the first aerial, remember to deploy your first. This is before staging. We won't do it. I've done everything right. I 
liquid engine in turn and assign their shutdown functions to the group. That's the liquid engine. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, liquid. Try it again, okay. So do the engine in first, do the shutdown functions to the group. Now when you trigger the abort action in flight, the engines will shut down, or if they can't shut down, be decoupled. The capsule will separate from the rest of the ship and it should be safe to land by itself. Remember to deploy your parachute once you whatever. This may require staging a number of times since the stage got... Well, why won't this advance? Got the decoupler before underneath the uh, pod. Click on the liquid liquid engine and I, oh, maybe I gotta. Shut down engine. That was it. Okay, I had to do both engines. Okay. And there we are, your orbital rocket is ready to fly. It's been a long lesson and thanks for hanging in there, in which we've covered lots of different advanced techniques for rocket construction. Give the new ship a name and save it, that's always a good practice, and then I recommend you try flying it through the Go for Orbit tutorial. Okay, let's change it. <coughs> um, go to Genesis. To or I to um, craft able to achieve orbit. Okay, done. And I think that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.